time, brothers and sisters. The Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. And we thank him for his, the privilege of open heavens and, you know, his grace that has led us into this course 307. The fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And by his grace, we've done 11 lessons so far. And today we begin with the first of three lessons to make up that full learning about apostles. The first of the fivefold we've been discussing for some lessons now. So today we're going to examine the question of women and the apostolic office. Part 1, and the next two lessons will do part 2 and part 3. Please stay with us and, you know what, keep an open heart. Let's pray and see how Scripture compares with Scripture to bring us to the place where we make the conclusion that there is no basis to exclude women from any office in the fivefold, including the apostolic office. Let's pray. Father in heaven, just have your way and teach us through your word. Grant us understanding and let your name be exalted in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the reality in this lesson 12, women and apostolic office, is that many people have questioned whether women can be called into the fivefold or even serve in ministry. Some have embraced the reality that women can serve in ministry, but they say not the fivefold. And for some, women can serve as teachers, women can serve as, a, uh, as maybe prophets, but they struggle with the issue of women as apostles. And one of the things we need to learn is that most of the things that determine how people approach the subject matter is that they approach it from an old covenant viewpoint and secondly some approach it by some of the things that Paul wrote to Timothy concerning the church at Ephesus and to the church at Corinth which have to do with order and the place of women who are married in the church in terms of you know making sure there is no disorder some people frame those things as the basis of rejecting women in ministry entirely so what we're going to do is the council in Isaiah 28 10 for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And in 2 Timothy 2 15, study to show yourself approved unto Elohim, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know what, brothers and sisters, this is the approach we're going to do. If you remember, a previous lesson talked about Yeshua as the sole compass of the lives of those called to the apostolic office. That is to say, he determines everything about them. So living with Yeshua as a compass of life means a true apostle will emulate him by loving righteousness and hating iniquity. As Hebrews 1.9 says, and drawing on the grace released through the affirmation means all the things we've talked about before, about apostles, one called to be an apostle must find it necessary to press into the fullness of giving him space to fill the heart and no space for Satan or the world. And this does not imply that the apostle is absolutely sinless in that sense but it simply says that look one who calls understands that light cannot dwell with darkness so there's a conscious decision that this heart is for Yeshua to reign you know as sovereign ruler and to be subject to his will the will of the father in all things the issue that we are called to holiness there's no doubt about it for anyone called to the office of apostle you know what first Peter chapter 1, 15 and 7, 16 says, As he who has called is holy, be holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be holy for I am holy. And when there is any stumbling in the mind, in the emotion, in the heart, in any shape or form, through spoken word or action, leading to sin, which is breaking God's law or separation from him, even for a slight second on the slightest of issues, you know what? People who are to be called to this office must be so sensitive that the Holy Spirit can say, oh, that thing you said, it was an exaggeration. That they can immediately be convicted of that sin and 
repent to the Lord and call upon him and receive cleansing and he closed them again with his justification and his righteousness as first John 2 1 to 2 says what are the implications of what I'm saying we are still on that issue of apostles and we are going for that you know to lay a foundation for what we'll share with you for anyone called to be an apostle the totality of life is entrusted to the hand of Yeshua so supplies grace for a servant to live and do the work of the ministry and it's so important that when people call to this office there's something about them and that is the principle in Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 to verse 39 what shall we say to these things if Elohim be for us who can be against us he that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all. How shall he not through him give us all things? Then who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's Elohim that justifies. And then he went on to say, who shall separate us from the love of Elohim? That's why, if you are wise, don't threaten an apostle and call to an apostle. Well, it doesn't matter whether male or female, with what you do or not do. Don't threaten them. Don't try to blackmail them. It won't work. Apostles are bound by what they believe the Lord is saying to them. And that's all that they respond to. They don't respond to threats and all that. So nothing, including money, power, fame, persecution, evil speaking, conspiracies, or prospect of martyrdom, should ever have the power to cause an apostle to miss the mark. And when life is lived in this way, the authority of Yeshua by his church is delegated to a worthy vessel who has not received the grace of Yahweh in vain. You know what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 10? But by the grace of Elohim, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of Elohim, which was in me. There's always that recognition that everything that is done is entirely by grace. You can't take credit. You know, my bad day, people were wondering, oh, they would expect posters and flyers and, you know, celebrating. How, what can I celebrate? I cannot celebrate anything. I am conscious that the Father took this vessel on worthy and began to purge and cleanse and began to patiently take things out and show the picture. The picture he showed was so awesome. You know, to the degree that 26 years ago when it was time to get married, you know what? We didn't exchange rings. No, rings were bought much later. These were much later. You know what we exchanged? Two things. A girly Bible and Operation World. Operation World by Patrick John Stone that has, you know... Uh, uh, study of all the nations of the world, their 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 capacities, their the the depth of penetration, where the gospel has gone, how far, and all that. That's what we exchanged to each other. This morning, the Lord was reminding me how it was so prescient about what the Lord was calling us to be. It wasn't for pleasure. It wasn't for all that. You no, know, we thank the Lord. The children came, are married, knowing, are married. Say well, if there are no children, praise the Lord. I was 40. So there's nothing to glory. It's His grace that today this work is covered West Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, even North Africa, North America, South America, the Caribbean basin. This work has covered Europe, is covered by the grace of the Lord, the Middle East and Asia, is covered Australia. It's His grace entirely. But that's what He showed years ago. So when Paul said, hey, it's his grace, that's what it is. So there's nothing to glory for me. It's just his grace that he used this vessel. And if anybody say, oh, the apostle, why don't you celebrate your birthday? You know what I said to them? I can't celebrate when Africa is in the condition it is, communities in Africa. You want to be a blessing to me? Get on. Partner with us. Let Africa Transformation Network take, take off. In some specific nations, just doing work transformation, giving water to communities that have no water, you know, touching lives, 
giving skills to people in the communities because the Lord said there is something he wants to do in Africa before the return of the Lord. He said it's 26 years ago, this past August. And brothers and sisters, these are the things. So men and brethren, the Lord is saying when people are called to this office, their life is not the normal life. It's an abnormal life. And if you are called and you want to enjoy the glories of this world, you are in the wrong calling. Men and brethren, Yahweh has always valued discipline. Contrary to what many false preachers advance, in the New Testament, saints are enjoined to work out their salvation with fear and trembling, even though it is Yahweh by His Spirit that does the work. He does the work. Philippians 1 6, being confident of this very thing, that He who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yeshua. Philippians 2.13, For it is Elohim that walketh in you, both to will and to do of his own good pleasure. And so we have a role to manifest the love of our Father by our prompt obedience, and those who are called to the office of apostle must be people who obey promptly. They hear him, they obey him. You dislike them for that, it's okay, praise the Lord. You love them for that, praise the Lord. But they do not allow what you think about them to shift them away from what the Father has said to them. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15, 14, you are my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Brothers and sisters, if you check Philippians 2, 12, as you have obeyed, always not in my presence only but now much more in my absence walk out your salvation with fear and trembling and all that he says the lord has said to us the kingdom is built on obedience to the word out of love and holy reverence and deriving from this complete submission of self to yeshua and enthroning him first in all things according to matthew 16 24 to 26, out of this kind of consecration emerges a human vessel who is dead to the old nature, dead to life, dead to ambitions, dead to inhibitions, and one that is crucified with Yeshua has nothing to boast of in the flesh and of the flesh. And out of this broken being, who sacrifices led as led on the altar of sacrifice is accepted by Yahweh, emerges a spiritual son, who in the realm of the spirit man is neither male nor female. Brothers and sisters, people tend to forget these realities about the new covenant. If you do not understand the new creation and the new covenant, you struggle about women in ministry. If you understand it, you'll be open to see what the Bible says, and you'll not be able to misinterpret scriptures. People have misinterpreted the Pauline epistles that are supposed to regulate conduct of women whose husbands, who are married, who disrupt things in the churches, and Paul said to them, if you have a question, go and ask your husband at home. Do not disrupt the church of Yeshua. There should be order in the place of Yeshua. You know Galatians 2, 3, 26 says, For you are all children of Elohim by faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. Verse 27, For as many of you as been baptized into Yeshua have put on Yeshua. There is neither Greek, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Listen to this. There is neither born nor free. In other words, you were Jew before, you were Gentile before. In Yeshua, you are one. You were born before, you were free before, you were slave before, like Onesimus, you were, free, you were slave before, you were a free man before, both of you meet at the cross, you are now one. He says, there is neither male nor female. You were male before, you were female before, you meet at the cross. You know what? What emerges is who he is. He says, for you are all one in Yeshua. And if you be Yeshua's, then you are Abraham's seed and then heirs of the promise. Christian religion ignores these spiritual realities and keeps things sense in a state of arrested babyhood syndrome where their carnal senses rule their lives. So in that state, sense get by and they get so hung up, focus on such carnal issues as what is your race? You are white, you are black, you are Asian, gender, you are male, you are female, age, you are old enough, you are young, you are too young, go and sit down, all that stuff socioeconomic status, you have a car, you have a house, you have a, your, your money is in seven, nine figures, your money is in ten fi in two figures, 
ideological persuasions, you see these things are they define religion when discussing the issues of the church. And unfortunately for the religious mindset, Elohim has long determined that Yeshua didn't come to this world to start a religious organization called Christian religion. No, that's not what he came to do. He came to pay the price for the earth rim to be repopulated with sons of Elohim. Adam and Eve were created as sons of Elohim. You know what? Before they fell, they were products of him. And the Lord wants to create through Yeshua's sacrifice at the cross, those who are going to be recovered, they will be sons of Elohim across the earth rim. In other words, to repopulate the earth rim with sons of Elohim who are not governed by their gender, their age, and their socioeconomic status is one of, the, one of the central tenets of the gospel of the kingdom. These people are to relate with him intimately. They are to take responsibility for care of his earth rim because some speak of maturity. So the father wants those he's going to commit responsibility over this earth rim to the point where it will be preserved from premature destruction by Satan and his cohorts and preserved until the day, the day Yeshua will come to set up the eternal realm of the kingdom. So in Hebrews 2 verse 9, which many people in religion don't know, it says, But we see Yeshua, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of Elohim, should taste death for every man. Now listen to verse 11, to verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So the entire purpose of redemption is not just to save us from sin, it is also to bring forth people into sonship. Galatians 4 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed for the of the father. Now even so we, when we we're children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, Elohim sent forth his son, made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons he didn't receive this adoption for only males that all who are born again will receive the adoption of sons and because you are sons elohim has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts crying abba father wherefore you are no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of elohim through yeshua this is not for only males this is not only for uh, people with big cap on their head this is the realm of sonship is the purpose of the gospel to create sons out of religious people religious people don't know about sonship man and brethren a, a careful reading of these two texts we have just read reveals that sonship which is the ultimate state of redemption was not and cannot be confined to males alone it speaks of spiritual maturity which manifests the nature of Elohim and embraces his will in all situations as Romans 8 12 to 14 says it is religion which got it twisted up and to subdue and control women and confine them into their domestic roles of makers of babies and tenders of the of the home and religion loves it that way and in so doing it falls into the trap of Satan what are the spiritual realities? It is important to remember that human beings are three-dimensional beings. Human beings are first and foremost spirits. Housed, they are spirits with soul, the realm of you know, awareness and self-expression, and they are housed in human bodies. Salvation by grace or cause in the realm of the human nature called the spirit man, the heart not in the physical body. The physical body is male or female. The soul 
is where you have emotional differences between males and females. But it is in this spirit man, which is neither male nor female, where the redemption of cause, that's where Yeshua sits inside the heart by his spirit, and that's where we sit with him in heavenly places. If you read Ephesians 2, 1 to verse uh, 5, you get this principle. He says in verse 4, But Elohim, who is rich in mercy, when we were dead in sins, I mean, Elohim is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had he quickened together with Yeshua, quickened together, by grace you are saved. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Yeshua Hamashiach. Where do we sit together with him? In our spirit man. Where does Holy Spirit live? In our spirit man. If you understand this principle, you know that it is in this spirit man, as First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, that our body is a temple of Holy Spirit and we should glorify Elohim. You now know that that is where he also deposits gifts and callings in the spirit man. It's not on the physical body. You got to understand these principles, and these three lessons, when you get all of them in context, is going to help you to be able to respond to truth the way you ought to. Let's look at the three marks of sons. Sonship is, is something we need to know. There are three major marks of sonship. Number one, it speaks of maturity. You've matured, and you've the maturity and ability to take responsibility for maintaining the estate of your father in the earth realm. That's what it speaks about sonship. It is important to know that we start our lives as spiritual babes, needing milk. But the clear intention of Elohim is that will be his sons. John 1 12. As many as received him, he gave power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them that believe on him. And so it's important to know. Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. We need to see manifestation of sons of Elohim who are mature to take responsibility for the estate of their father. It comes to a place of stability in the Lord. It gives him right away to rule a sovereign king. It trusts him in all situations. Lose control of your life because you trust him. Whenever a believer has come to this place of spiritual maturity, regardless of gender, age, socioeconomic status, or ethnicity, that person is a son of Elohim, molded in the image of the ultimate son. So what it means is this. The males, believers, who mature in Yeshua, they are spiritual sons of Elohim in male bodies. In the same way, female believers, saints, who mature in Yeshua to the point we have described, they are spiritual sons of Elohim in female bodies. Their body will perish one day. 90 years, 100 years, 85 years, one day it will perish, but the spirit will live forever. That's where the definition of identity is. We must understand this intent to repopulate the earth stream is about managing the earth stream again, like Genesis 2.15, like the dominion mandate of Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 30, and Psalm 115 verse 16. In this state, we can speak with enemies at the gate. So, Galatians 4.5, Galatians 4.6, Philippians 2.14 and 15, and Hebrews 2.10 and Hebrews 12.7. And this is so important. The second mark of the sons of Elohim is submission to the leading of Holy Spirit. You see, they are mature, number one. That is, they have grown to the point they have grown babyhood. They are mature. Number two, submission to the leading of Holy Spirit. That was a hallmark of Yeshua. He submitted to the Father in all things. John 4, 34, John 5, 30, John 6, 38, even at the Garden of El uh, Gethsemane, the will of the Father was his dwelling place. So when we come to the place where the will of the Father defines your life, not the will of your spouse, the will of your children, the will of your parents, the will of the Father defines everything about you. You know what? Romans 10, I mean Romans 8, from verse 10 to verse 14, you find that you follow him, what he tells you. You may be popular, 
you may be unpopular, people may like you, may not dislike you, but just to know his will and do it is a mark of sonship. Then number three, because of that, you come to a place of surrendered will. You are not seeking your will, but you are seeking his will. His will is what gives you joy. It's what gives you satisfaction. It's not what you see with your eyes. It's not what you enjoy with your body. It's his will becomes your defining feature. And Romans 12, 1, therefore, you take your whole being, verse 1 and 2, and lay at the altar of Elohim. Galatians 2.20 Die to self that he lived through you. And you have nothing to glory in. Galatians 6.14 But Elohim forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Yeshua by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. When these three things are seen in anybody whether you are male or female it doesn't matter. What matters is that your spirit man is mature. You are seeking the will of the Father. Your life is surrendered for him to use the way he wants. Once you see this, you've seen a mature spiritual son of Elohim. That male body of male body, the Lord can use in any capacity, in any office. It's not our job to decipher Elohim. When you see the grace of the Lord in such a person, you see the gift of the Lord in such a person, you see the passion of the Lord in such a person, you see the direction of the Lord in such a person, you just give way. And that is the way the Lord wants his kingdom to run. So we're going to explore further this subject matter in the next lesson and the next lesson. That is to say, there are three lessons that deal with this issue. If you understand the overall spiritual principle of kingdom life and ministry and the gospel of the kingdom, you are not going to struggle with what you see people abuse people on social media. If you are doing the work of the Lord, you have no room to use social media for abuse, for insult. Use social media to edify. Use to build up. Every one of us, our social media should be educational platform, should be for edification should be for encouragement. Our social media should not be for throwing barbs and offenses and anger and, you know, hatred and animosity. It has no value. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you and I wax you. If you can share this video, encourage people to you know, watch the video and also read the teaching lesson because there are a few issues that are in the teaching lesson. You know what? The Lord will enable us to get there. By way of assignment, in which realm of the human body, that's one, spirit, soul, and body, which realm are the gifts and callings of Holy Spirit received? Is it in the spirit realm? Is it in the soul? Is it in the body? Two, what are the three marks of sons of Elohim? Please discuss briefly. And with this, we come to an end today, and then tomorrow we continue. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the great I am who I am, we bless you. We thank you for the opportunity to come to this place where you alone will guide us into the deeper realities of kingdom truth. Father, enable us to understand what you're saying now, so that Satan will not succeed to lock up the manpower base of the church. But Lord, everyone you've called, cause them to see and know. Cause them to submit to your process and Lord, cause your church to be open to what you are doing in the now. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know 
ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at aklife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of yeshua jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.